In this video, we're gonna show you what my process was for getting to the launch monitor I currently use, and how did I get to this point? What were the factors that went into it? Hey everybody, Scott Oden coming at you here. We're in my training center just outside of Chicago. As we said earlier, I wanna help you make better decisions when you're buying your launch monitor, start understanding some of the things that you're gonna see and what you should think about if you're gonna get into this space. I think that's really important as you go through because there's so many options that are coming through and helping you make you know, this a more accessible part of golf, playing indoors and having a simulator in your house. But, there are some things you have to know because I think with every unit, there's gonna be strengths of the unit, there's gonna be weaknesses of the unit. So we're gonna go through some of those things and help you hopefully make a better decision as we go. Before we do that, make sure you click that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. We've been going through, you know, now that you have the tech or you're gonna get the tech, how are you gonna use that tech to get better? I'm trying to give you some of those ideas of what we're doing here in the studio to help people use this indoor space to really have some great successes out on the golf course. So. Don't miss out on that, click that subscribe button down below. With that, let's get into it. So before we get into it, I did wanna throw a little disclaimer out. I am not in any way affiliated with any of the companies that do these launch miners, all right? I make the decisions, uh, you know, these are all bought with my own money. They are just what I've invested in and what I've found to be what works best for me. So with that, wanna just make sure that that's very clear. And when we go through all of the steps, I think you wanna really think about these steps really clearly. I'm gonna show you why I picked what I picked, but I want you to think about what those steps could be for you because that's really important when you're doing this process. That's part of why I've had to switch as I've gone through and moved around space to space and things like that. So with that, just wanted to mention that before we get started. So first, where am I at currently with units? So I've had TrackMan 3s, I've had two TrackMan 3s in my life, I've had FlightScope X2, I've had two of those, I've had GC2, uh, I've done that a couple times, I've had SkyTrack, I've had uh, E6, the, the True Golf Simulator experience, and now I've ended up here with the Mevo Plus. All right, so this is a unit I've been testing for about a month, a little over a month now. And this is the unit I'm gonna go with. I was trying to figure out if that was gonna be what I was looking for. And this unit so far has met what I need personally for my business, I coach golf, and for what I just enjoy. I've really enjoyed myself playing, on, playing golf on this unit. I've actually played some rounds uh, when I don't need to, so it's been kind of fun. But let's go through what the process is for why I've ended up with this unit as what I'm gonna be using. So the first thing I'm thinking about as I go is uses, okay? What am I gonna use the units for? What am I doing with my indoor space? And that's gonna help me determine kind of what I'm looking for in a unit. So for me being a coach, I have mainly coach in a group setting. I rarely coach individual private lessons. I'm not saying I don't do it, but I, I rarely do it. And so when I'm in a group setting, I might have righties and lefties together. I might have, you know, different needs with, you know, hey, I need this type of at this space or this spot, I need this type of activity or drill, and I need another one at this space. I need there to be a little bit of flexibility. Some of the games and stuff that we do, I'm a very much a, a, you know, we do a lot of games and things like that to help teach skills. I'm a skills coach. I don't do, you know, and I hope that builds the technical side of their golf swing. But some of those games really need, you know, some flexibility and where like the ball can go, stuff like that, the placement. So being able to just put it on a dot or in a small, area that doesn't actually work for me that great so that's some of the stuff I'm thinking about with uses then I think about all right hey I like to play a lot so ease of using the simulator aspect you know in some of my other launch monitors where you had to like go through a third party you know app and connect and then it, sometimes I'd run into issues I was I was running cords and stuff like that that was hard to do and manage again when you had to start switching the units around that got a little bit tricky as I was doing it. Able to do it, not my favorite thing to have to do though. All right, so the uses that I'm going for, you know, are, hey, I need flexibility, I'm having people interchange all the time, and I need 
the course to be very easy to get into as well. Plus I need the unit to be very easy to set up. I'm gonna take this outside. I teach outside as well in the summer on occasion. So I wanna be able to bring it outside. I wanna bring my indoor experience outside. If we're doing drills you know, on the Flight Scope Skills app, I wanna be able to take those outside. I wanna be able to take, you know, play on the course. Hey, that sounds really cool to me. I wanna go on the range and hit balls and actually play on the golf course while I'm hitting on the range. That sounds really cool as well. So those options became available when you start looking at the E6 Connect on a iPad, plus the device being able to do it. So th that's not just specific to this particular device, but when you start wrapping up the whole package, this device became more apparent to me. So you wanna think about what you're gonna use it for. If you're just using it at home, hey, it's my practice bay simulator, uh, that's something I would think about. Uh, you know, hey, I'm running these types of cords. It's a little easier to manage those. That's what you're gonna think about. If you're somebody that's gonna have people over playing all the time, I know I have some buddies that have this issue come up where they have to start switching the units back and forth. That, that's something you wanna think about as well. So, I mean, just your general uses, that's gonna start letting you know, hey, what am I looking for in a unit? Might not be the end all be all factor, but it's gonna get you thinking where you wanna look as you're going through that. So uses are gonna be a huge part of what you're doing with the units. So the second factor you're gonna take in when you're looking at your units and what you're doing with you know, picking out what you wanna do is gonna be environment. Now, these could all be interchangeable, by the way. I could say uses and environment, you know, that could be one or two, it just depends on how you look at it. Me, I'm very lucky to have an environment where I can pretty much pick what I want and I'll be able to use it. Now you may not be able to do that in your environment. So think about what you have. When you're using a radar based unit like this FlightScope Mevo, Mevo Plus, you're gonna need space. You're gonna need at least I'd say 16 feet from you know where you're hitting into that screen to where the unit sits, all right? And then you gotta think about some of the logistics that go along with that. All right, if I put the unit there, and let's say you wanna have a couple people in, and am I gonna be able to fit those people in? Am I gonna be able to fit golf bags in? I mean, that stuff gets in the way. That's stuff I've run into over the years uh, that you run into. You have to think about where people are gonna go because you have to think about safety issues. So, you know, it's just, even if you're just hanging out with your friends and stuff like that, I think about that in my business all the time, but you wanna just make sure everybody's having a comfortable experience as they're, they're using the simulator. So that's something you wanna think about as well. So if you don't have that space, that's where you might start looking at a sky track or you're looking at one of the units that are more photo based where they're gonna sit right up alongside and they really don't need any minimum ball flight. They need to see the ball take off and that's gonna be about it. You also, if you're gonna look at like, hey, the lefty righty features of this unit, you know, just like the SkyTrack uh, or a GC2 or a quad, if I'm gonna go to the lefty side, even though this unit sits behind and it's very easy to do, you do need the space to swing to make that easier to work with. So you gotta think about that stuff a little bit as well. Now, I think in theory, this unit could be easier to slide along like maybe a track and it could still stay aligned. Whereas when you flip in the units, especially with how finicky some of those units that sit alongside, you know, you really gotta get those correct, just like all of these units, but you really gotta get that aligned properly. So if I see it turning on a turnstile, anything like that, or a turntable, you know, you still need the space, but you also really gotta make sure that unit's aligned really, really accurately. You might've saw in our last video, we laser align them, and that's what makes it an enjoyable experience. So just something to think about as you're going through and picking out your unit as you go. That's, I think that's really important. The other thing I would think about is where are you gonna use it, right? So it kind of goes back to our uses. What's the environment you're using it in? I use radar based because I like to take this outside. If I'm gonna be just inside, you know, admittedly radar based isn't gonna be, I don't think it's as accurate as a photo system. All right, it's not gonna be as accurate as a photo system because the radar system, the more ball flight you can give it, the better, okay? The more ball flight you can give it, the better. That's just the way it is. That goes all the way up to TrackMan. You know, that's at $25,000, uh, that is exactly the same thing. My experiences in using 
those devices. And I've heard it's gotten a little better with the four, but I still hear that there's, you know, those units are designed for more outside. I mean, that's what a radar system is. So you will get not 100% on the spin reading, okay? You might see spin reading be low. See that all the time on those units. I saw that all the time on TrackMan. I saw that on X2. That That's just something that would happen once in a while. Now, a lot of times they were really good. I've been really happy with the Mevo Plus as far as that goes. I've been using, you know, just a good golf ball and it really seems to work well. I think that really matters. But again, if you're somebody that's really finicky on, hey, I'm going to get my numbers 100% correct, that's what I want to go, I would really think maybe about a quad or some sort of GC2 with an HMT because those systems are designed for that environment. They are, that's their first priority is to work in that environment. You know, these units, radar units, their first priority is to work more outside. All right. Now, they've gotten way, way better, but I still think their first priority is working outside. Outside, zero issues with them. They're awesome. Inside, yeah, are you gonna see once or one once in a while that, that you get a weird, like a half spin read or you're gonna see a little bit of lower spin? I think you do see that from once in a while. Again, that can depend a lot on how you set it up as well. So that's something I'm gonna think about as I'm picking a unit. What's my environment? What are, combined with what I'm using it for, that's gonna help me make a choice of what unit I'm going with. All right, and then we come to the final point. I mean, that's gonna be budget. So again, that could be interchangeable for anybody. You could be having you know, budget be your first factor, right? That That's something that you would put on your priority list. For me, the budget was, something that was obviously very important, but I, I actually took it into a different account. Again, for me, the more units I can have, the better. So that made it a little bit of an easier decision for me where my budget actually kind of factored into, hey, I could have more units and have consistency across my bays and also have units that kind of check all the boxes of everything else I want. That's something that went into my decision as I picked out the units. So that that's something you could think about, but budget's gonna be a big deal. I think nowadays it's gonna be you have a lot of options across the spectrum. You can go even as low as you know, some of like the Opti shots and things like that and get really low. Just know, I mean, as we probably could have guessed, the higher you pay, I think the better your performance is going to be. That's no doubt. I, I just don't think it's, you know, something that you have to kind of pick where you want to be. That's why for me, uses was number one is, all right, what do I actually need it for? Because that's going to let me know where I kind of need to look for my devices. Where am I going to go? Could I go extremely high end? I would rather not. But if I went, go that route, am I actually going to get the uses I need out of it? Am, am I paying and going to get what I get on top of some of the smaller units? In my opinion, that wasn't going to happen. And actually, I gained a little bit more by just having more units. You know, it's kind of like the law of diminishing return. If I go from having nothing to having a unit, I get a lot of return out of that. If I start just going from having this unit to having a really, really high end, how much more return am I getting out of that for either my enjoyment, my, you know, players having their skills get better, you know, all of those things. And what I actually use for coaching, that's going to depend on it as well. So that's what I'm thinking about as I go through and pick out units as I go, as I'm going through. So that's, that's part of it. And it's a big part. So just think about what your budget is. I would think about what you want out of uses and things like that. Again, if your budget's very limited, then you're gonna really narrow down what you have in the first place. If your environment's really limited, you're gonna narrow it down anyway. But again, if you have kind of some things that you need to do and you have a pretty open environment, then all right, budget's gonna start to really become a big factor because you have to decide, all right, how much am I willing to spend and what do I need out of the unit? So again, they really intertwine as you go. Am I gonna get my money's worth out of the unit? And that's what I thought was a very important factor when I was picking. All right, so again, I've gone with Mevo Plus. I've been able to try them for a little over a month now. That's something I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've also, you know, side note in there, again, not getting any 
payment or anything or any kickback from these companies, but I've just used FlightScope the longest. I've had, you know, X2s, uh, I mean, almost 10 years, you know, was when I bought my first X2. They've always been great to me. They're always open. You, I, I think it's really rare you can call and you call the support line and you got the guy that built the thing that's on the line answering. And for me, I guess I call him too much, but he'll answer and, and talk to me by name. And that's all part of it too. So just a great company to work with as well. That's been my experience uh, with them. They're the best company I've worked with for these. So with that, that's how I went through my process. That's how I ended up here. Again, if you're looking for more of the data and all that, we've done some videos on that. I'll make sure to link those and you'll be able to see what kind of we see when we're using the units. But as far as the process goes, for people that are trying to pick out units, a lot of the questions, hey, what would you go with? Why did you go with that? I get that email and that message a lot. So I wanted to go ahead and share with you why am I here with these units? And I've had a lot of experience with almost all of them. So why have I ended up here? What's been the deal? And that's why. So hopefully that helps you out, makes a better decision. And again, hopefully we can all enjoy this really, really fascinating thing that's going on in golf where indoor golf is becoming actually more popular than outdoor golf, which is great. I think it's fantastic, you know, that we can play so fast and be able to do this. So looking forward to it and looking forward to the online play and hopefully being able to play against some of you in the future. So that would be really cool with that. Thanks so much for watching. Again, hopefully this helped. If it did, make sure you click that thumbs up button. That really does help out. And if you want to see more about how we're going to use these units, I'll show you more of what we do, then click that subscribe button. Don't miss out on those. With that, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.